Hello, everyone else on the internet. A few months ago, I got a Pocket NC, which I'm going to assume you know what it is if you found this video, but if you don't, it's a CNC milling machine, a desktop sized CNC milling machine, and what sets it apart from all other desktop CNC milling machines currently available is that Pocket NC has five axes of machining capability. Um, that means we can do all kinds of crazy, uh, intricate projects with pockets and features on all various sides of the part without having to re-fixture the part in many different ways. Um, Pocket NC is a pretty new machine, and as a result, there's not a lot of content online about it. Um, there's a few people making some pretty interesting videos, but the volume of content is pretty low, so I thought maybe I could contribute to that. Um, I've been working on several projects, and I thought I would start going back and taking, now that I know a little bit more what I'm doing, taking uh, some of the first things that I did and producing short videos about them and how I went about tackling these problems and some solutions that I found to things that you might run into if you have a pocket NC. Um, so I thought a good place to start would be one of the very first things that I did, which was to engrave some labels and text into some of my keys. Um, this might be a problem that a lot of people have where you've got a bunch of keys on your key ring. They're all basically identical because they all go, for instance, to the same building, but they all do different things. I have a mechanical and an electrical key to the mechanical and electrical spaces in a building. Um, but no way of telling them apart other than they weren't labeled or anything else. So I just made a really basic CAD and CAM setup for engraving the words mechanical and electrical into these two keys. And I thought maybe I, the first thing I would do in this who knows how long it's going to be series of videos would be to show you how I went about doing that. Seems like a good place to start. So I'm going to take you over into Fusion 360 and show you what my um, CAD and CAM look like in Fusion 360. Then we'll come back over to the machine and I'll show you fixturing the part in the machine, the setup, running the machine, and we'll see what the output looks like. So here I am in Fusion. This is my really basic model of my key that I'm going to engrave. Um, it's not very accurate at all except in the areas where the vice jaws of the pocket NC vice are going to grip it. I didn't even bother to model the actual key part of it. I'm just concerned with how it's going to hold in the vice and the space on it where the text is going to be. Um, so I did a brief quick model of it, uh, then I laid out some text with the Fusion Text Tool, uh, a font that I had on my computer, um, and pocketed that down into the key uh, to give the cam environment a place to mill out. Um, I also added a draft angle to all of the inside edges of the text um, because I'm going to be using the uh, 10 degree tapered 164th uh, rib cutter from the Pocket NC Ultimate Tool Set. Uh, that you can get on the Pocket NC website. I'm just using that because that's what I have handy, but uh, the real tool to use for this would probably be some kind of engraving cutter. Um, but since I'm using a 10 degree tool, tool uh, I found it got better results if I added a 10 degree draft angle to all of the pockets. Um, then I took this part and imported it into another file which contains the Pocket NC vise and table. Um, and I set the key up in the vise the way that I found that it works best on the machine, and you'll see that when I get over to the machine later. Um, but the vise jaw moves by selecting rigid group, selecting the components, and then you can move everything all at once. Um, you put the piece you want to work on in the vise, and uh, you know virtually clamp the vise down onto the part, uh, and then you're ready to go. Um, so I'll move over into the cam environment. Um, this is a really basic operation, so it only uses the one toolpath, um, which is a pocket operation. Um, there, again, are probably better ways to do this. If you were just using a really basic font, you could do a simple line following uh, engraving uh, style toolpath, um, but I'm not using an engraving cutter, and I wanted to use this font uh, to make my key extra fancy. So I'm doing a full-on pocketing operation. I'll show you what I changed in this toolpath. Um, the speeds and feeds for this are really non-critical because we're going to be milling brass, which mills really nicely, and it's going to be incredibly shallow passes. So we're not worried too much about um, chip loading or all, all that. Uh, the tip of the tool is quite small, but there are flutes there, and we're going to be going at quite a high RPM, so everything will clear fairly nicely. Um, in geometry, I just selected, uh, I, I made a sketch with a box um, around everything and made that my boundary. 
Um, and then in height, I set my heights so that the top of the toolpath is at the top of the key. Um, and the bottom of the toolpath is at the bottom of the key. This means that it's going to try to mill out everything it can between the top face of the key and the bottom face of the key, where there's things to mill out inside that rectangle, um, which basically comes down to just doing uh, the text itself. Um, I did adjust also the step over because I'm the, the tip of this cutter is a uh, ball nose technically, um, or not a ball nose, but it's a radius cutter at the end. Um, and so I didn't want to have ridges in the bottom of the text, so I turned down the step over, and that can be found in passes. Um, since this is such a small operation total, it's not going to take very long, and having a small step over and wasting a little time isn't going to hurt anybody. Um, so now I'm going to take you over to the uh, to the actual machine, um, and uh, I'll show you how I have the part fixtured, and then we can watch it go. All right, here we are at the machine. I've got my key right here, and uh, I'm just going to put it into the uh, pocket NC vise, just like this. And uh, because of the way the key is shaped, my key anyway, on that edge, it um, goes in the vise pretty well, and it sort of self-centers, interestingly, because of the way it's curved here. So I'm going to just tighten that down, and that's uh, about as good as I'm going to get it. Let me uh, make sure we're square here. Yeah, good enough. Um, and then I'll pop over to uh, Axis on my uh, laptop. And I'm going to hit Begin Executing Current File. Hit the yellow button on Pocket NC, and uh, it's going to get going. And then uh, I'm going to speed it up for this, um, and uh, I'll see you on the other side. Well, it looks like this might not have uh, come out so well. Looks like it wasn't quite square in the vise, and we got some leaning. And I guess uh, it sort of leaned over and only engraved part of it. And I, that happened to me once before, and I think it's just a, an issue with the... If I had maybe if I had to use the straight pins instead of the threaded ones, it maybe the threaded ones cause it to sort of push up a little bit in one side or the other. Um, but I do, on the back is one I did earlier and it came out really good I just didn't shoot it uh, shoot it for video so uh, but this is the result you can achieve and it actually looks pretty good um, so it might be a little hard to see on the camera because this is the pattern side of the key um, and it might be freaking out a little bit let me see if I can uh, focus on it here it looks like that might be about the best I can do focus wise it's probably hard to see. I'll put a, uh, a link to a photograph, a still picture, uh, in the description of this video. But um, hopefully in the next few videos I'll, I'm going to show you some more interesting things that I've done and, uh, and some techniques for uh, calibrating your tool length offsets and I've got a few other ideas. So uh, stay tuned and I'll, uh, I'll see you next time.